This is very long video for Avalanche reviews, basically listing all my legit gaming media stuff. Here we had our own AAA publishers. Right now they are barely function, but before they actually were investing into games and paid developers to make new stuff. Half of them even had in-house studios. In 80s and 90s, Western and Asian publishers didn't care for our whole market and therefore market didn't care about them in return, resulting in whole country scale piracy. There were no tech support, no localization for games and prices were beyond luxury. Pirates on the other hand did make full voice translations and even provided tech support for games we were selling. Pirates here were not just some DRM cracking groups on the internet. They had actual brands and websites. Basically, pretty much real publishers, but illegal. So, let's start with the book Entertainment. The legend says it was actually them who started to sell games in jewel cases and with full translations with local pricing, which of course means that they started to actually compete with piracy and as Gaben says piracy is a serious problem. And even while they were selling jewel cases, their cases always used colored plastic and stood out. Actually, development of my two most favorite games was played by Buka. Next, there is Adines or 1C which is actually a big office software developer. But they had everything they need for full cycle publishing, so they just started to localize and distribute all software, including games. Later, they actually opened a lot of in-house studios, which made Ildvashturmavik series, Theatre of War series, racing game series, canon series and all games. Now they own Soft Club and our small publisher which never had a prominent brand and book entertainment itself, though they don't make games anymore. Next there is Usabit M. For a long time this publisher looked like extension of GSA Game World since they were publishing only their games. But later they made deals with other developers. Most notably they were the first who started using Star Force DRM. Novi Disk or Mew Disk was not very prominent, but they were the official distributor of Nintendo from 2006 to 2011. And of course Akela the one from Jungle Book. Which always was either too lazy or too elitist, because they rarely translated audio. Their in-house studios made Sea Dogs and all versions of Disciples 3. Ironically, they started as a hired brand, which made full equalizations. So, this is my shelf. And this is Kenga. A knock off of Chinese knock off of Famicom system. Привет, я командир новой реальности Сергей Супонев. Приглашаю вас в собственные владения. The sole reason why Nintendo doesn't exist in our market. <laughs> we basically lost whole market to Chinese pirates and had to make deal with them to use their distribution channels to sell Super Nintendo at later consoles. This is Maxter 44 megabytes hard drive. It actually have DOS installed on it and even QBasic. Unopened floppy disk pack. Actually I have several of them. Magneto optical disk. They can go up to several gigabytes. Sega Mega Drive cartridge most likely pirated since they were not very popular or legally published here. Giant bunch of pirated discs. I stuffed them here when I went legal, but I think I should probably just pack them back in jewel cases since I have so much of them and still have all the covers. 
Ancient US Robotics Modem. Magneto Optical Drive itself. Three and a half inch. Soviet Calc with Lamp Display. So let's start with the big stuff. Here I have two versions of first World of Tanks Collector's Edition. One with BTS V and second with Panzerkampfwagen Zwei J. Two versions of Office and XP. Actually, I think I have whole pile of them. A lots online jigsaw puzzle. Got it from one of conventions. TP from Abloud, New Vegas. Disciples 3 Resurrection Jigsaw Puzzle. Duke Nukem Forever Collector's Edition Box. We actually never had the edition with giant boost of Duke himself. Disciples 3 Renaissance Collector's Edition Box. It had t-shirt in it. There actually were three editions of Collector's Edition. <laughs> Imperial, Elven and Legion. I chose Legion because we promised black t-shirt, but instead it was grey, very very light grey t-shirt. Some DVD boxes. Saboteur, Red Faction Armageddon, Alice, Lego Raiders, which is actually kind of fun game. It somewhat reminds me of Dungeon Keeper, because you can take direct control of all units. There is pretty good video by Sander CR on this game. Darkspore. I actually like it. But I didn't have anyone to play with since we were playing a lot in beta. So I lost interest when I hit really hard stuff requiring a lot of teamwork. Diablo 2 and Expansion. Released in 2007. I actually had pirated version before. The full voice translation but with sped up music like Alien and Chipmunks or something. First Fable game with Lost Chapters. On four discs featuring Artwork of four different classes in different ages. Fable 3 Supreme Commander Gold. We just used the same print. They didn't even get the box supporting two DVDs. What is this? I had to use tape so it won't fall out next time. Supreme Commander 2 and this is the moment when my GoPro Hero 3 just died and I had to use some other camera. Well, worth noting that Blizzard themselves or their no-name partner did the same with Diablo 2. We just stuck a lot of discs in paper bags into one disc DVD box. It turns out that Red Faction of Magedon DVD box actually had poster inside it. Precursors game with sleeve DVD box. First Darksiders game with sleeve DVD box. Contains grilled calendar inside. Funny thing, typography mixed something up in some of the boxes. Titan Quest with very nice sleeve, but actual cover is not that pretty. Contains poster inside. These two were actually given to me by AA. And they are really awesome. Custom 2 disc DVD box with covers made of rough metal. I actually never used it or played Warhammer Online. Android Alert 3 is a custom 3 disc glossy metal box with all the noise actually being only on a sleeve. Second disc contains special materials like making off and third one contains music, also poster. They gave me several copies of each and I just gave them out. Overlord 1 Overlord 2 And this one I bought because we never had Rising Hell before. With pretty plain print on the disc. Sleeved DVD box of King's Bounty The Legend. Contains a set of 36 plain cards. King's Bounty Princess King's Bounty Crossroads. Duke Nukem Manhattan Project. Duke Nukem Forever DVD box from Collector's Edition. Despite the fact that this is Steam version, this is region locked and contain only Russian audio. Comba. Двойная комба. Двойная комба. With voice acting being done by the same guy who did Shrek and in the same voice. 
разыскивается Огры. No, just and John for you. First Dead Space. This was the lucky one. The usual jewel case version was sold for 300. But this one in pretty DVD box actually priced at 150 due to method up screenshots on the back cover. And all nearby shops were selling this same method up box for full price or higher. Dead Space 2. Never used the disc, never played it. Disciples disc, containing all games before third one. Disciples 3 from the collector's edition box. Disciples 3 Resurrection, first one I bought. Contains jigsaw puzzle. Slightly bigger version of Disciples 3 Resurrection I bought recently. Contains art book and magnet jigsaw puzzle. Since I already had Renaissance and Resurrection, Akela gave me the key for Disciples 3 Reincarnation. But when I finished the game, I actually hunted down and bought physical version recently. Contains a lot of cards with artwork and more stuff. The orange box itself. The thing which started the downfall of physical media. Again, one of the discs is in an envelope. Contains the poster of Team Fortress 2. Recently, Bro decided that he doesn't need any physical media anymore and offered to take all his stuff in big dump. And since he threw away original covers and didn't really care for discs remain, I will not all dumped games I have from him as dumped. Dumped Left 4 Dead, Dumped Portal 1, Dumped Half-Life 2, Dumped Left 4 Dead 2, Dumped KSS, my Left 4 Dead, My Left 4 Dead 2, My Half-Life 1 Anthology, containing Blue Shift and Opposing Force, Dumped Team Fortress 2. But let's talk about this crab. Publisher decided to have this sloppy light version with pin and cool sleek dark edition, which look it much cooler and I like it, it content more. But the catch is, they both had three different stickers, and the cake sticker was claimed to be in the light edition only. And guess what? The cake was a lie. Also never used the disc itself since it's on Steam anyway. I had all three Heroes of Might and Magic 3 before. But when I got this Platinum Edition containing all of them, I just sold them to Dude. This is Harris Chronicles, the OG episodic game. Work out just fine for them as well. Revolt of the Beast Masters, the Sword of the Frost, Master of Elements, Clash of Dragons, Heroes of Might and Magic 4. Again Chronicles, with Warlords of the Wastelands and Conquest of the Underworld. Notice that they never had the World Tree of Fiery Moon. Vines of War, Heroes of Might and Magic 5 from the Dump, Heroes 5 Silver Edition, which was mine, containing original Heroes 5 and Dwarves add-on. Heroes 5 Gold Edition, containing all three Heroes 5 games in a stylish black box, Gathering Storm, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. Il 2 Stormavik series. Repeat after me, kids. Il, as in sick, you can use too. And then Sturm, as in storm in Deutsch language. Sturm, o Vik. Forgotten Battles are done. And second one from the dump. Battle over Europe. Pacific Fighters are done. Ace Expansion Pack, all never used. GTA 2, subtitled Limitlessness, which came from criminal slang and means not following laws. The criminal laws, that is. GTA 3, 
Release date. Dot, dot, dot. 2010. Some just never learn. Y City. Release it 2009. Never use it. San Andreas. Release it 2010. GTA 4 and episodes. Never use it. Civilization 3 full. Never use it. Before I had pirated version which I played a lot. Civilization 4. Civilization 4 with all add-ons. Including colonization. Never use it. Sleeve it Civilization 5. Cossacks European Wars. Art of War add-on. Back to War add-on. American Conquest Fight Back. I actually had American Conquest Vanilla before. But someone lifted it from me and never returned. Григорович Сергей Константинович Game World Anniversary Collection 20 years RTS genre 15 years GSK Game World which started with Warcraft 2000 Atom Age bootleg game 10 years Kazakhs series Contains Alexander Movie tie-in game American Conquest and its add-on Kazakhs European Wars Strangely renamed Kazakhs Art of War Kazakhs Back to War and Kazakhs to Napoleonic Wars and Battle over Europe Now to Forgotten Realms Baldur's Gates 2 which I previously had aspired at 4 disc and first Baldur's Gates was on 5 discs so I had to create a 6 disc box just for it. Later I bought Forgotten Realms over compressed to side DVD containing all Baldur's Gates until Baldur's Gates 2 was finally released in 2009 followed several months down the line by release with Crown of Baal and Gold Edition with first game with add-on in 2010. Never used any of these discs and considering that I have them on Steam Baldur's Gate 2 might be the game I bought the most copies of. Icewindale released in 2006. Heart of Winter again 2006. I had pirated versions before. Icewindale 2 actually released in 2003, shortly after worldwide release. Nero Winter Nights 2 with AirQuest promo showed inside. A lot of Akela boxes had AirQuest 2 disc inside. Science they were official publisher and localizator on these territories. Never Winter Nights 2 Complete Edition with all add-ons. Never used. Demon Stone Action Game. Battlefield 2, which I bought pretty late in its life cycle. Community was still alive in 2008. Battlefield Bad Company 2, which is my favorite battlefield. It features a lot of destructible buildings on the big maps. It all went downhill from there, with annual copy-paste iterations without destructibility. Battleforge EA Never forgive Never forget Planet Alcatraz or Dungeon Cleaners and its sequel. Games based of fanfic on Quake 2, written by cult entertainer Militia Senior Detective. First one is rather junky and linear, also lacks facial animation, but the second game addresses all of it. It's a real Fallout 3 or Russian Fallout, the holy grail concept of our game dev scene. It captures the spirit of Fallout with its mechanics, despite being an active pause game. It's not one of the post-apocalypse brown wastelands as in every game which tried to monetize them. It's actually something different, but the structure of true Fallout with its wanderlust is there, combined with absurdity and joking nature of the Fallout 2, though in totally different universe. Star Wars The Force Unleashed and its sequel. The best things which came out of Star Wars universe. In the first game, you can just drop battlecruiser on the planet using force. Here Star Wars are not government religion or even occult classics, they are just in our sci-fi movies. Witchmen and Slivet Witchmen 2. Age of Empires 
Once I met the new year with my uncle, who is one year older than me. When we opened our gifts, he got bunch of strategies on one disc and I got some Rainbow Six. We then traded them, since he already had most of the games on disc and I didn't like military FPS or FPS in general at that moment. That disc had Age of Empires 1 and 2, Caesar 2 and 3 and Pharaoh. I used it so much that it became unreadable. So then I purchased another pirated Age of Empires collection until it was finally released in 2005, with second game getting released in 2007 and again on a disc containing first one, Age of Empires 3. Add-ons were never officially released, so I got them only on Steam. Age of Mythology. Again had the pirated version until official release in 2008. Dump it more in. And this is mine. Bundle to Forms Blast and Black Thorn, which I've got when I purchased it used PC from fellow student in university. I actually hated Morrowind because it was so much dumbed down from Daggerfall and looked so ugly. But after experiencing modern games, I went back to it in 2015 and found that it has the best Khajiits in the series and there are a lot of neat features. Dump it Black Thorn. It seems that Bro had the same Asus motherboard. CS3 Dumped The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Worms Games Second Armageddon and World Party Perimeter and its add-on, Emperor's Testament, which actually killed the studio. CEO was against money milking and just left, while everyone else ran the studio into the ground. It's a non-conventional RTS, heavily based on terraforming, with campaign made of player versus environment and player versus bot missions. Economy mechanics centered around in pot out pot balancing and all units can transform into one an hour on the fly. Also, chronologically, it's a prequel to Wonders. A lot of Rage of Mages. I had first game only on Pirate Disc and you can't buy them since rights belong to Mail.ru because of a lot online and not to Nival. It is cool RPG with some tactical RTS mechanics. Evil Islands. It's supposed to be a lot free and it takes place in the same universe and even mechanically it's pretty similar to a lot, but it's very hardcore and more RPG focused. It has very good crafting mechanics. You can break items into basic components and blueprints and then switch cheap materials to high level ones and or stuff some of magic spells inside them. You can even create armor with self-healing on being hit. Lost in the Astral, standalone add-on made by fans, which was actually published by Newal. Multi client discs for five games, three of which are free to play. A lot online, which I played a little. Another run of the mill World of Warcraft clone, but with Slavic slash Soviet Warhammer 4K world. I was playing during beta, when there was no button to switch off PvP, so it was pure chaos. It was fun for some time. King of the Pirates, which I also better tested. Primitive VIP MMO with some neat features. Perfect World. Grando Espada. And Slapshot. Mafia 1 Console garbage in the sleeve And this is very neat disc containing all of the DLCs Sleeve it Kane and Lynch 
Never played it. Can I to? Stronghold. Don't know where is back cover. Should be somewhere in the flat. Stronghold Crusader. Oh, this is actually my disc then. Stronghold 2. Home planet. And home planet gold containing director's cut, playing with fire Adon and Babylon 5 mode. I found her danger and opportunity. It's a hardcore space sim with as much realism as they managed to make at the time. Sacred with underworld expansion. Sacred 2. Right now I am in the middle of Project Sacrilege. I plan to 100% this game. Well, middle is a statement since I spent about 60 hours and got about 10% of the game. High end version on a spare disc and two disc box. Seriously. Sacred 2 add on. Space Rangers. One of the best flat elite likes. It has pause turn based space battles, real time arcade battles in hyperspace, and a lot of text adventure quests, including spending your time in the jail every time you got caught being a pirate. Space Rangers 2, which is basically the same game but with better graphics and more complex systems. New gameplay mode is simple RTS planetary battles, somewhat similar to Dragon Commander with direct control over units. Space Rangers 2 reloaded, don't know what they changed there. Never use it with disc. 219. Soldiers of Anarchy. Very cool real-time tactics with complex vehicle or combat mechanics. All on you to kill the crew and take everything to yourself. The Fall, Last Days of Gaia. One of which is from Dump. Probably the same thing, but riding the Fallout is Dead Wave by switching grey wastelands to brown wastelands. Played only a little of it. Mountain Blade. Slivet Mountain Blade War Band Original with Fire and Sword And remake of the Fire and Sword on War Band Engine The latter is the one which is sold on GOG and Steam Orthodoxy plus World War II is the official government religion here I'm not a crook. Oh, so так он. Collapse. And Collapse the Rage. Third person action games featuring Ukrainian streets. They are pretty okay, but balance is pretty skewed. So they actually fixed melee damage in the expansion. Paradise cracked. Hardcore cyberpunk turn based tactics. But it's very slow paced due to turn based nature of the game and lots of enemies. Lots of enemies. Cops 2170. The power of love. Game set in the same universe. And as far as I know, they actually improved turn times. Stalker Silver Edition.
Dump at clear sky and call of Pripyat. Mechanoids. But they changed the name in the English version to AIM, Artificial Intelligent Machines. Another flat elite like with cool gliders and interesting storyline. Funny thing, they used the same sound clip, which Valve later used for Medigan in Team Fortress 2, and it's really uncanny. AIM 2 Clan Wars. 350 AIM Racing 150 Battle Mages Signs of Darkness And the first game this is another very cool RTS RPG mashup, where instead of building, you should escort workers to mines, so they will bring required resources to the towns until we level up. Grandmother Look at this beauty. This amazing cover inspired me for several designs. Very colorful arcade tank action game with customization and OST is just top notch. Last dump at one. Wangers, my most favorite game of all time. An hour flat elite like game, but much more story focused. It's very hardcore. It doesn't hold your hand well, it doesn't even want you to be there. It wants you to be dead. Life is tough. The game uses voxel based engine and sales changes to the terrain. So after several hours of play everything is broken and full of craters. And the music is just amazing. This is some serious Gesamtkunstwerk. And another from the dump. My brother actually made a paragraph for me for the game's cover. Southern Storm. Another from the dump. And Sentinels. Full 3D turn based tactics games with amazing destruction system. You can level the whole city. If you have enough ammo. Hammer and Cycle. Another fun made mod published by Newal. Most of the mechanics are the same as in Salem Storm, but actually it's an RPG game with several different endings and in party relations. And another one from the dump. Night Watch Muay Thai In. It's a mediocre game with Mimesis level writing, featuring its own story. Day Watch is a sequel to Night Watch, much better mechanically and with better writing. This one actually good and made fans want for Twilight Watch which was never made. Ex Machina, such a good name, too bad it was turned into hard track apocalypse in English translation. Again, flat elite like and one of my favorite games. Car based RPG with a lot of vehicle combat and customization. Meridian 113. Which traditionally was renamed into Clan Wars, because every sequel is a Clan Wars in English. Shorter, more condensed game, with some new cars and laughable explanation about American trackers switching to Soviet mega trucks. Arcade, simplified linear game, which was never planned to be in the Ex Machina universe, but publisher forced them to use that name. Driver San Francisco leave it. That's strange. Ah. Machinarium, leave it. We have 2010 games catalog inside. Call of Duty 6. Bullshit Storm Riddick with Athena Shattered Union, which was given to me by Brooke working in retail Edge Mirror Psychonauts 
Psychonauts, which I bought in 2012 and it was all dusty. Sacrifice. Don't forget to watch Total Biscuits video about it. Prey, which contains Steam Key, and Riza still can be found in retail here, and their case can be sold to collectors for bigger money than their cost. Braid, with bunch of casual games and adventures. Painkiller with expansion. Basically what is now sold as Black Edition. Homeworld 2. Never used it. Dragon Slayer 2. Never used it. Dump it Cold Zero. Have no idea what this game is. Dump it Upload. Why do I keep this toss back around? Hitman Anthology. With original discard designs. One thousand. Juice X3, which is actually a champion of Special Olympics with its sleeve. It doesn't fit well on my shelf. Bearshock 2 Jagged Italians Anthology Originally I had one from Buka, but this one contains Deadly Aliens. Uses the same localization though. Probably gave out Bogus version for our own. Released it in 2003. All three Penumbra games in sleeved box. Never used. All three Fallouts. Release date is 2008. Of course I had all three of them on pirated discs. Next two were given to me by Bro when I worked in CSK after motor racing team. Also he was the one who showed me first Deus Ex. Breed. Have no idea what this game is. Chaser. Pretty long first person shooter with giant levels and a lot of interesting weapons. Master of Orion 3. Medieval Total War, which was given to me by one C in their office. Incubation. Old turn-based tactics game. Released in 2005. Pretty cool discard. Spider-Man Shattered Dimension. Like it, didn't like Arkham Asylum. All points bulletin. We all know how well it went. Runes of Magic. Probably some MMO. Quoted for free at con. Arkham Asylum. Which I own several copies of. And which never worked because games for Windows Love is full bar. Devil May Cry 4 with gangster case. I had Devil May Cry 3, but it was taken from me, life's got to always be messing with me, can't we chill and let me be free. Full Pipe is a bizarre adventure game created by Ivan Maximov. Watch his shorts. His shorts are amazing. I linked his channel with some of his works in the description. Theater of War. Hardcore real-time tactical war game. Time Shift. First person shooter from Saber. With some really neat ideas, but pretty much mediocre overall. Armageddon Riders. Which was renamed to Clutch. Vehicle or combat game with upgrades. Somewhat similar to Need for Speed on the Ground 2. Slivity Adore Genesis. Hero based TBS. 
almost entirely made by Alexei Bokolev himself. It has a lot of very interesting mechanics, but the game is ultra hardcore and can take up to month of real time to finish. Envelope with pre-released build of hired guns is a jagged age, which I got from Rusabitem to test. Turgor, or Tension Game, which was later westernized and butchered and renamed into The Void. Signed by CEO slash director and composer. Pretty interesting case. As director claims, it was his journey inside himself after he was worn out by the release and reception of Pathology game. As far as I know, can be played with driving tablet. Pathologic. Signed by CEO slash director. My second favorite game of all time. Amazing story meets amazing narrative in this tale full of timeless poetic stuff. There are three vastly different protagonists with different goals and playstyles. There is a GD edition on Steam and they are making a remake of it, but there are all chances that remake will be disaster. First of all, it has console release. And second, there is a possibility for it to be a walking simulator. But at least we still have this one and no one can take it from us. Star Heritage The remake of all the X Spectrum game of the same name. It's a fanfic graphic adventure game with a lot of hardcore elements set in the universe of Elite game. They wanted to make sequel and third person action RPG prequel but didn't manage to find required amount of money. Rams vs Asses Pretty simple game in which animals are constantly flying towards each other and can grab some weapons while avoiding collision with the ground. Primitive but rather fun. Crazy Lotta Giant pile of mini games and arcade classics compiled into the one plasticin stand with rather good sound design. Russian style pinball one table with changing art styles, nice host and funny hand-drawn mini-games. Eye of the Dragon Dragon Simulator RPG It's pretty nice, but review say that Steam version doesn't work properly on modern systems. Hooligans Storm or Europe Neat tactical strategy game with unique theme. Wiggles or Deagles, the myth of Fenris. Indirect control RTS RPG with eugenics. You start with building huts out of mushrooms and stones and developing into the underground space age. Symbiote or the Swarm, third person action game set in Moscow. Gorky 17 or Odium, turn based tactical game made by Adrian Hmelash, who also worked on Painkiller and Bullshit Storm. Dumped Gorky 18 is full rewriting of all dialogues to Mimesis level made by the guy who wrote Dungeon Cleaners. Also, notice that Adines had their own custom design for Slims. Excessive speed. Pretty cool top-down racing combat game, somewhat similar to rock and roll racing. Sledgehammer or JR Grinder. Rather simple combat racing game. With unlockable upgrades and a lot of different mission goals. Slew Demigod, the only mob which I somewhat liked. Praetorians, headed on Pirate Disc at first. Release date 2005. Tactical RTS game set in Roman Empire. Enclave. Another one of my favorite games. Its world is very stylish and combat mechanics are somewhat hardcore, to the point of being hard to understand for button measures. Also you can shoot 8 hours from the bow simultaneously. Army Man Air Tactics Tactical arcade chopper sim with puzzles. Creatures 3 Hardcore eugenics slash basic programming game. 
Eugenics were so in depth that in the second game community managed to circumvent a bug with creatures having retardism by in game methods. Next five games with some pirated discs I've got from my now world days. Avancast is a strange IRPG game. Clive Biker Jericho is an action game with a couple of neat features and raw repetitive nature. Unreal Anthology contains first Unreal, Return to Napoli, Unreal Tournament and Unreal 2. Also second disc with host. Well, the case is so broken I might as well change it. 7.62 It's a sequel to Brigade E5 which of course got new Jagged Union subtitle in English version. One of the most hardcore real-time tactics I played. Preference. Judging by the cover, contains naked chicks or something. Sid Meier's Pirates. When I last time showed it into my disk drive, my PC instantly reloaded, so I just torrented it instead. RC Cars is a racing game with RC cars. And there are two versions of it on Steam. One is this, RC cars and over called Smash cars. Project Nomads. Why is it in Slim and where are all the cars? It's one of my favorite games. Probably undressed it to take it to the walk. You have your own flying island and can build a lot of stuff on it and pilot airplanes, bombers, rockets or just use a jetpack. Robin Hood The Legend of Sherwood This is an amazing commandos like game. It has some strategic elements, cool mechanics and pretty good narrative. Story is basic, obviously. Stops the zombie. The premium zombie simulator. Metro 2033 You are empty. Basic horror FPS game set in Soviet Apocalypse. First Majesty game. Released in 2008. Slewed sequel with couple of add-ons. Laser Squad Nemesis. Remake of the Laser Squad, the ZX Spectrum game which gave birth to XCOM. Can't truly remember which group gave it to me. Lionheart. Real-time fantasy fallout with totally broken balance. Missile in 2004. Chicken Shoot Basic Shooting Range Game Postal X Anniversary Edition containing Postal 1, 2, all of add-ons, including local made several mods and music disc inspired by Wacky Postal series. I had Postal 2 disc before, but I gave it to someone. They're suffering given to me by an hour bro when I started to work at my current job. Mass Erect Gold Edition but it contains only one DLC so I had to torrent all other DLCs. Mass Erect 2 with no DLCs same treatment Shadow Wall. Super bad game, riding Fallout is dead wave. I had it, then I gave it to my brother, and it returned to me in the dump. Dump at Spell Force Gold. Pretty cool RPG RTS game. Dump at the Sting. No idea what's this. Dump at Commandos 2. Dumped Sudden Strike 2 and Cold War Conflicts Days in the Field 1950-1973